Welcome back, everybody, to episode 10 of this Let's Play of Gordian Quest. My name is Gracian. Thank you so much for watching and coming back for the continuation of this excellent, excellent game that is harder than I remember it being. I'm not doing particularly well, am I? But uh, I'm, this is the one. This is the one. Now, last combat, we figured out that those poison circles on the ground do an incredible amount of damage. We're talking like 27 damage on proc, which happens instantly. It's It was crazy. I thought that she would just get a poison counter or two, but she actually got enough to proc it immediately and took 27 damage, which is insane. She almost died. Uh, she was rooted in place, but uh, Catherine here... So we did narrowly avoid that. Now, fortunately, we have a blessing and then a campsite coming up. So we will have an opportunity to rest up, which is going to be very important because then we have the boss fight coming up with this uh, golem guy that we fought uh, on the last playthrough that didn't go very well. Um, we ended up... Oh, is, what's going on in the background? Do you see this wiggling in the background? What is this? Okay, anyway, that's kind of freaking me out. Okay, so let's head on over to our campsite. Got our blessing with haste. I wonder what that does. That just gives us initiative or something. So let's take a look at what our abilities are here. So we have share a drink with an ally. Both of you recover one exhaustion and recover 20% of max HP. Smuggler stash. Find a random item. Now that costs two supplies, but that's really interesting. Catherine can heal someone for a lot with a supply. Or for the next two battles, party gains a buff granting one might every turn. That might be a good one to use. I think we'll go ahead and put that in. Can anybody use it? No, she has to use it. We do want that. That's going to be very important against... That's 30% extra damage every turn um, against the boss, who's really crazy strong. Cover HP equal to 25% of maximum HP. He does not need any. Or lose HP equal to 25%. Heal target for double the amount. Oh, so he could actually lose health. Give it to her. And, and we need something here for Alphonse. So maybe we have a chat real quick. These two will chat. Uh, I visited every town along the coastal and inland roads. I have to say, the inlanders are a much more uptight bunch. Walking around with sticks up their bums. Yeah, I'm sure that's how he would say it. So we can either draw a smuggler's stash to find a random card or random item. Or we can gain 40 like synergy. I haven't really played with this, so I want to do this and see what happens. Most interesting indeed, he says. It's like, I'm busy with doing blood stuff. So they are 40 out of 100. Wow, we got a long way to go with these two, don't we? Oh my god. All right. So back to camp. You can pitch a tent. We should probably have somebody do that. Maybe we'll have Alphonse do that real quick. And um, consume a supplies, add a warm meal to hand. Or maybe we go ahead and transfuse this character okay so then they've healed he took a little bit of damage she healed a little bit um okay what else do we want to do do we want to find a random item or do we want to uh probably want to draw cards we have one exhaustion per hour Let's do the warm meal real quick, because I do want to get some more stuff going on. Remove to exhaustion. Draw two. And we'll go ahead and have you rest in a tent. Okay, so we've got a couple we've got a couple tents up now. She's resting. So let's have you two chat again. Draw a happy hour. Draw two. Let's draw two. Got a lot of things here. Add one supplies, gain one exhaustion. One supplies, gain one exhaustion. Got a lot of these, actually, these foraging. Um, gosh. Let's just pass an hour. Find a found that. Let's have you forage. We'll have him rest at the last second in a tent for a little while. So she is at full health. Alphonse needs to. We could have him do one more forage, and then we'll have him rest a whole bunch. 
Rest, recover 15% maximum HP per hour. Remove one exhaustion per hour. When complete, draw one. Can we just pass an hour, find our supplies, put this person in a tent. And then I think we just, like, just have people rest, just hang out. We got a chat here, we could do these two. I do want them to uh, gain some reputation with each other, some allegiance or whatever this is. Every living creature's blood has a different scent. The difference is minute, but if it's there, you can. Fo if you, but it's there if you focus hard enough. It's hard to describe. Please share more if you're inclined to. These are not. <laughs> these are not tailored to the response, are they? That, that was weird. Okay, uh, we could do this again, but we already have the might, so I think we just pass an hour. And then we're returning to our adventure. So everybody's all healed up. We've got some buffs. We actually managed to gain supplies through that resting. No exhaustion. Inspiration. So we have haste and might. So let's go fight this guy. This is our second chance against him. It was pretty horrible the first time. Okay, so they got... Not super great rolls here for initiative, so that's good for us. Now, this is a little bit close, but not too bad. God, Alphonse is fast. Okay, so this guy is movable, right? All right, so what are these guys going to do? He's going to guard and heal. This one's going to deal 8 damage and 7 damage to all targets in the lane, which is just him. So 15 damage over here. So can we, can we guard up enough here? We've got deflect... No, we can't. We do have to get somebody in the way to take that damage for him. So we could daze and enfeeble. Why do you have an extra action point? Wait, what's haste do? Plus one maximum AP for the next two rounds. Oh crap. Okay, well, might as well use this because it gives a little bit of vulnerable. All right, so we want you to put a pool of blood here. Maybe there, and then we can actually pitchfork you into the blood. And then we'll just do this just because it hurts you and we have the points. Okay, so now there's a lot of damage coming through. We don't have any <laughs> offense, so we're just going to be we're just going to be doing like guarding this turn it looks like like a lot of times. Oh my god, that's a lot of defense. Okay, you can't Oh no, it does it in the lane. Oh, I'm a fool. <laughs> Can we kill this thing off before he gets a chance to absorb it? That'd be pretty cool. Seven damage to three targets. Hmm. We could do caltrips. Pull one and 18 vulnerable. Well, that's just not super helpful. Shift to a random cell. Apply six vulnerable. Let's try that. Okay, so then we could caltrips here. Do you have a pitchfork? Okay, okay. This is looking okay. So we could pitchfork this guy. Oh no, we can't. This guy's in the way. Let's just do this. Okay, so we killed that little construct. So does that mean he can't merge with him now? Or is he going to like resummon him or something? That would pretty that would suck. So you're going to hit Catherine. If I shift over to here. They're both going to hit her. Okay, that's actually good. So we can Armor up. Root ourselves, but we have six armor. And then we just want to get some defense here. 
14 damage. That's pretty strong. Okay, that got through a little bit. He's hitting different targets now. I don't know when he's going to combine with this thing. But we might be able to burst him down. Now he's going to hit 14, 7 damage to 3 targets. Dang it. At least we can guard some of it. So let's go ahead and... Wait, wait, wait. What is this? Blade Fragment. Acquired from killing an attack construct. Remove all defensive buffs from target. Deal 4 armor damage. Whoa. Defensive. We can't reach this guy back here, so we'll just save this card. Um, wait, why does it do 20 damage? What? Is it because of all the vulnerability and the, the bleed out? That's interesting. So let's just Caltrips here. Swift Strike. Okay, didn't help. Deflect. And deflect again. Try not to take any damage here. We could also use our, our small health vial, but I think we're okay. <laughs> he says confidently. Okay, so we can move him into the Caltrips. Oh, that was big damage. Put a pool of blood under him. Bone barrier. Okay, so we have a buttload of damage. And is that it? Do we have to kill this little guy? No, we don't. Ooh, okay, two levels each. Excellent. Awesome. We got relic tokens, legendary currency item. These tokens can be traded to Marco for a chance at obtaining legendary items. I still don't know who Marco is, but we'll figure that out. We've got some gold and some auger orbs. Some gold. Okay. Select a boon. Boons provide an instant bonus or last the duration of the next realm. So we could get all heroes recover 90% of their health. Not necessary. Deadly encounters have 30% more renown. Party gains plus 8 to initiative. Ooh. Renown is tempting. Let's do the initiative. I'd rather make sure we always go first. That's a huge bonus. We never need to like gain initiative again. Okay, so now we can actually move on to realm number two. I'm pretty determined to beat a, a second realm in one of these playthroughs. Shattered Province. This has plus eight to initiative. Party has minus fire resist. Enemies resist physical damage. Now that's going to be a problem because we do a fair amount of physical damage. Twisted Territories, gain initiative. Oh, this is just showing our bonus, it looks like. Party gains plus one exhaustion when entering the realm. Curses inflicted on the party last twice as long. Or the Emerald Domain. Party uh, routes have a higher chance to be difficult to cross. No forge nodes. I'm thinking this one. One exhaustion is not too bad because we can just heal that up when we get a chance. And if we get any more, we'll just camp. Um... Curses last twice as long. Not the end of the world. So I think we go to Twisted Territories. All right. We've passed through the Realm Gate. We're now in this next node. We could immediately go and camp. That's dangerous because then we will not get much experience until we get down here. We don't really need it other than the one, the one exhaustion that we gained. So I think we just move on to this Horde, which has more gold and more items, which is cool. Let's take a look at our boss fight down here, see what we're dealing with. This is a Lich. Oh, and a Nether Hag cultist mage like a mini boss. Uh, okay. Consume 14 supplies. I'm sorry. What? Oh, it's trying to show. Oh, I see. It's showing the. If I click here, it'll show the, the cheapest route, it looks like. Oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, 13. That can't be right. Why is it saying that? Anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's get our leveling up. Now, do we get any 
equipment. We have that shield. This isn't helpful. Okay, so let's go to our skill grids. Alphonse, we want to head up to here. Can we, what is this? When unlock, you can swap in talents while camping. Let's grab it. I don't even know what it does. Oh, oh. So the talent tree, I forgot about this altogether. Now this used to be in the game. Every other level up, you would get one of these points. It looks like they're a little bit more rare now. Maybe they're more valuable. Um, let's take a look at what we have access to. So we probably want to take a look in dexterity for Alphonse. So we can get stuff like plus 10 initiative. Item cards gain plus one rank applies to daggers and swords. Plus four dexterity. Range cards um, gain guard equal to, okay, on turn start gain guard equal to your dex modifier if there are no enemies in your lane. This bonus is capped at 10. Gain critical, is there something for traps I wonder? Medium armor proficiency. Item cards gain plus one rank, applies to medium armor. Dexterity base, headgear, gloves, and boots, plus three to maximum HP. Gain plus one max card draw, ooh. Once per turn, you can use your default move to, um, to move one cell at no cost. Mobility, plus one max agility charges, plus two to initiative. If your dexterity is higher than your intelligence, add half your dexterity modifier to your intelligence modifier. Oh my god. Well, we do have bad strength. There's a lot of good stuff in here. It looks like we can't take any points in here because you need at least 10. So we can take all the way down to here because we have... Uh, 14, 15 uh, dexterity and intelligence. Okay, so for Alphonse, I'm thinking I might take this plus one max card draw. I do like the idea of making sure that we have our combo pieces, our movement lures and our traps in our hand as often as possible. So I do like this idea. So I think I might grab that one. And let's see if that shows here. It does, max hand draw, it was five a little bit, a second ago I checked and now it is at six, so that's excellent. We do have one more point with him. Let's grab Sabotage 2. Get a good card here, hopefully. Explosive Bola. Deal 5 burn damage and apply 1 burn. Chain 1. So this will chain to something else. Heavy Boomerang. Hit all targets in adjacent lanes. Whoa. Apply 3 vulnerable. Push each target to a random adjacent cell. Interesting. Malice. Trigger. When your trap is triggered, gain 10 guard. Retain. That's That's it right there. That's definitely it, because then we keep this in our hand all the time, and we just have 10 guard, like, most of the time because of our traps. So we can spend less actions defending and more actions setting down traps. So let's learn this skill. That's going to be really great. Okay, let's move on over to Kudo here. Kudo, we got his reaping skill, so we may go up here and grab a talent. Now, Kudo is currently using... Mainly intelligence, a little bit of strength. He doesn't have the highest strength though, so let's take a look at his talent here. Swap talent. So what do we have in strength? Plus four maximum HP, 10%. Item cards gain extra rank, plus four strength. That's pretty cool. Restore four HP upon surviving a battle. Recover 15% of your maximum HP when you complete an event challenge. That's interesting. Plus three maximum HP. One plus one physical resist, recover one HP on kill. Plus one limit to max SP. Oh, certain skills use strategy points. Okay, cool. Oh, so it's strategy points. I've been trying to figure out what to call him this whole time. And we can't get anything down here. We can also get him some intelligence. There sure is a lot to, to look at here, isn't there? Um, I'm thinking I might do... Thinking I might grab more, I might grab more strength modifier. Um, this is going to help with a lot of stuff. So that's actually going to pump his strength up to 16. So he's got a plus three, and then these will do a couple more points of damage, which is really good. These are also based off of strength, uh, so the vulnerability from this. And then we may give him some intelligence on our next level up, uh, the, or next talent acquisition. So we could boost our card stats, give him some initiative. We probably want to head on up this way but i remove a skill from your deck i don't really want the initiative though so let's grab the stats on a card um we do have a this blood pool we could make this blood pool also three rounds instead of two i do like that i don't really want them i want i want the battlefield completely covered in bad stuff for our enemies i don't want it wearing off 
Catherine, we could definitely head to a uh, talent for you, but we do want this spirit healer node, so it won't be right now. Deal 20 damage, reveal a temporary common or rare heal, heal card for every channel. Keep one, consume one channel. Reveal a temporary heal for each hit on a cleave. Oh, that's interesting. So it's only in her lane, down her lane, but it does cleave. Consumes one channel. Discard a heal card, gain one channel. Uh, interesting. Consume all channel. For every three channel, raise max channel by two. Okay, well, not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna get this Divine Strike. Healing through beating. That's Catherine's motto. Maybe we head up this away. Let's give her a stat point. Maybe, probably just keep going with intelligence. It's working pretty well for her. Okay, so we're back to the map, so let's plot our route. I think we head this way and do this horde encounter. I don't really want to be doing all this stuff where we may not get any experience. And also, there's a curse here anyway. And there's a fate here, which is pretty good. This will be... Oh, two, like, bosses or mini-bosses? I actually don't know what these symbols indicate, like, relatively. So, let's go this way and we'll find out. Okay, so we've got some skeletons, just bone warriors. We've got... More guys coming in. Bats. This one's going to hit Catherine. This one's going to hit Kudo. That one's also going to hit Kudo. So, Kudo, you have a little bit of defense. So, we may have to shift one of these bats out of the way and try to convince them to target somebody else. Actually, a lot of hits coming in this turn. Not big hits, but a lot of them. Um, can also just destroy something. So, Catherine probably has a lot of defense. No, she didn't draw a lot of defense. Interesting. Okay. So we need to kill something. We need to kill something is what I'm hearing. So let's plop a Caltrips down here. And then let's lure this skeleton into it. Okay. Let's bola shot this one. And then we'll just tripwire somebody like here. And that should be fine. We did kill off one of them, so that's good. Now, Catherine is going to get hit by this melee attack, so we can actually guard that completely with this. Uh, we do have a little bit of damage here. We must have hit some thorns or something, so let's smite this skeleton. And perfect. He'll heal Alphonse up. We can actually hit this guy. And that's it. Now, Kudo is going to take a little bit of pain this turn. But we can also put a blood pool down. This is a tripwire pull. And 18 vulnerable. So if we did 9 damage, we would shift them to here. It doesn't really help us. So let's just uh, move these around. Drain 5. That's fine. That's the best we're going to be able to do. We're going to take a little bit of damage, but he'll also heal a little bit from the blood. Okay, we still have the little mini boss coming in later. Okay, it's bleeding out now. That's interesting. So we have lots of traps here. Excellent. So got a little bit of range damage coming in on Alphonse. So we want to kill this guy if we can, which we definitely can. We can just smack him with a sword. If we shift to here, the targeting does not change. Okay. So we can move move these guys around. So let's throw Caltrips down here. And then we'll lure one of these bats, the higher health one. Nope, this one into this damage. Yep, so we killed off a bat. Catherine's turn. We could get our healing card, actually. Let's, um... Let's smite this bat. Now, let's shift over. Now, we can't hit this one because it's in the back. So, let's smite this bat. Heal self. Okay, well, unfortunately, that's the only card we were given. We do not need this. Lasts until discarded, so... 
use it, I guess. You didn't even get anything to <laughs> to attack with. Oh no. So just deflect, I guess. You got all these uh, retain cards, which is great, but this stupid exhaustion card's in the way. Okay, mini boss is here. Oh. So we can um, slap some caltrips down and uh, lure this guy into it. Some pretty big damage. Now, what was this? Oh, the what was that card we just used? It was the retain card, but it must... It must upon... Okay, Malice. Trigger when your trap is triggered, gain 10 guard, retain. Oh, so if you trigger it and get the guard, you don't retain the card. Okay, that I guess that was going to be kind of OP. Um, but still, that's cool that he can get free 10 guard by triggering a trap, which is basically what we want to do every turn anyway. And now he's not going to take any damage from the boss if he survives. So let's plop a Caltrips down here. We may be able to shift him over. Catherine's turn. Now this is going to chain forward. Oh, he moves when he gets hit. That's right. All right, Kudo, it's up to you. Boy, you have a lot of cards this turn. Um, so move to here and die. <laughs> right, no level ups. That was a good combat for us because we didn't lose. We, well, we lost a little bit of health, but we, that was pretty good, I think. So we got, um, some gloves plus one intelligence plus two to strength based challenges. Has, it says it has two sockets, but what's this socket? What does this mean? Hmm. We got a loss barrage, plus two attack damage. Keep one more card in hand on turn end, plus one intelligence. Medium stamina vial. Probably grab these gloves. Catherine have any gloves on? She does. So who else wants some intelligence? Kudo wants some intelligence. All right, Kudo, got a pair of gloves for you to use. Could give you this shield. Plus two guard with strength defense skills. I don't know that he uses those. No, his guards are intelligence. Uh, so there's no reason for him to wear this, but oh well, we'll give him a tower shield just for fun. So we got our fate point, and then coming up next is a deadly encounter with a couple of bosses, which is pretty interesting. So let's go... Let's go take a look at this. Now, we'll, we'll be doing this on the next episode because we're actually all out of time for this one. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I'm glad I was able to beat that boss. And I'm fingers crossed that I can beat the second boss down here and actually get to a third realm. Uh, make some, some big renown, which would be really cool. Maybe unlock another artifact slot or discover a new artifact or something. So, again, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you in the next episode.